And in the course of the morning contemplating this, I realized um, you couldn't fix what was there from inside. Um, it was completely captured inside the building itself. When I stepped back and looked at it and I realized it's going to burn down. You're not going to stop what's going to happen with that specific uh, building. But God wasn't there anyway. Someone else was there. And it wasn't about saving that specific building. It was about saving the broader community around it. And uh, that I had to get above the situation. I literally had a station view of it like we have here, but much closer in. And I realized it was actually, at the end of the day, these were small people. They'd, sm they'd captured one small location. But the solution that came in my mind was, in that specific case, that you weren't going to try to rebuild in that exact spot. Something wrong had occupied that space, something evil. And uh, what had to happen was to go build another space, adjacent, fresh, clear, clean. We have our great pillars here, our academic pillar, uh, our military pillar, our physical pillar, and the most important one is our character pillar. And it's well defined in the Cadet Creed. It's about someone who chooses to live above the common level of life and someone who chooses the harder right over the easier wrong. And uh, that the community would address this problem and fix it. That uh, um, that was actually just a small group of people, a small place. It was a captured place. Uh, and uh, the people that had built it in the first place had probably been great, sincere, honest, uh, God-fearing people, but that specific site uh, was not the right place anymore. The way forward wasn't to try to rebuild some past thing that wasn't it anymore, that wasn't right anymore. It was to start fresh and to um, allow the community to move on, to uh, clean that place up, but not to be in that exact same spot. There was something that wasn't fixable about it that didn't make sense. It was easier to just uh, uh, move down the street around the corner to a better spot that fit the community better and move forward. Re covered. Please remain standing while the oath of office is administered. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. 
that I will support and defend, I will support and defend. The, Constitution the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. For such a time as this, it is right to offer prayers for all who are in positions of high authority that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives. But lieutenants, you are West Point's gift to the Army on its birthday tomorrow. Wrapped neatly in new uniforms, and stuffed with commitment, competence, and character. As we give you to soldiers and their families, may God strengthen you to serve selflessly, to give yourselves generously, even to the last full measure of devotion, to sustain the vision that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Amen. James, read, cover. Second Lieutenant Vanderwall. Dismiss the class of 2020. Re cover. of 2020, dismissed! station water.
you see to the right, this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's They're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now, in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him, but the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see, and so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. Oh, oh, hey, Tim. Tim, you still there? Yeah. Um, can you explain to us what this astronaut's going through as he sees something with his eyes in 3D space, but it's not actually there being broadcast to the public? What... What's going through this astronaut's mind? This system is sending signals to the brain um, that don't, doesn't really match your eyes, and so your brain's trying to work out the two differences. Here's the thing. Uh, as much fun as this was, there is a time coming when you and I will not be able to tell the difference, and space has not changed. Uh, technology to fake space has gotten better. In this next segment, I'm going to show you how NASA grabs objects in 3D space, rotates them around, manipulates them. They can do this with water, with cloth, anything. And the cool thing about it is we can take what they're doing, what they're seeing with their contact virtual reality augmented lenses and put that on a separate video layer live. Yes, live. And do it all in real time. 